The seasons of the year, they come and go. Continents drift, ice caps melt, entire species disappear. Everything is always changing on this planet. Everything but the game I love, baseball. Unfortunately, my love of the game had never translated into a winning record. But all that was about to change. This year, I was playing for a new manager, Mr. Ed Barons. To him, losing was unknown. Imperfection, unacceptable. Just win. The only words he lived by. He wasn't an easy manager to play for, but I didn't care. After years of being on losing teams, I was beginning to feel like a loser myself. But with Coach Narens to guide me, I knew I could turn it around. I knew I could be a winner. They say the world is divided into two kinds of people, winners and losers. But how do you know what you are? How do you know if you're destined to go through life with this branded on your forehead, or if you're destined for greater things? I found out in our very first game, when we took on the dreaded bacon barn. For some reason, Mr. Nerens never left his car, but it didn't affect his precision coaching. He'd analyze the variables, make the right adjustments, and we did the rest. You're out! Winning felt better than anything I could have dreamed of. It tasted better, too. The slush shack had a deal with the lead. In exchange for their billboard, they gave away free slushies to the winners of all the games. We were in slushy paradise. And since Ellen had a summer job as apprentice to slush master Bob Oppenheimer, every game we won and another excuse to see him. Ellen, hi. Hey, Pete, how's it going? We won. Believe it or not, you're looking at a winner. Congratulations. Just don't start acting like one, okay? You got a deal. Hey, slush girl. Large line balances are now. Oh, pardon me, I believe I wanted a great I was Judas. Come on. An orange Lazarus, if you please. Mr. Nairns, I have made it very clear in the past that the orange Lazarus is not included in the free slush agreement. I'm very sorry. Slush money. An orange Lazarus? How can it's not on the menu? It shouldn't even be on this earth. Long ago, I created the orange Lazarus, looking for beauty and perfection, and what did I get? A hedonistic nectar of greed and power. It looks good. 
It is evil. It's too tempting. It's too delicious. It's too cold. You think you drink it? Mm. No. It drinks you. A drink from the chalice of victory, brave warriors. Arms Lazarus for everyone! Yeah! 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 What about the brain freeze? If consumed too quickly, the super cold Lazarus could shut down your central nervous system in 1.2 seconds, resulting in a condition known as the brain freeze. Mr. Narens didn't care. In fact, the only time he seemed to be truly happy was when he was alone with his Lazarus. Some say he needed the subarctic cold of the Lazarus to replenish the ice water that flowed through his veins. I didn't care why he slurped it down. All that mattered was we kept winning and winning and winning. Then one day, our winning streak sputtered to a stop. It started when Teddy's parents made him get a precautionary flu shot, just in case he caught a chill sitting on the bench during night games. The tiny bit of the virus in the vaccine made Teddy a carrier. Before long, half the team was infected. And those that remained were no murderer's row. Two to third! We got stomped in five straight games. With each defeat, I felt the loser insignia forming on my forehead. Puny humans. I will make you proud of me, Lazarus. Narens, however, wasn't a man to take defeat lying down. So the mighty Naren set off in search of a player who could turn our whole season around. I didn't have much hope, but by our next game, he unveiled a secret weapon unlike any baseball had ever seen. Willie May's offensive weapon was his fence-clearing power. Ted Williams' offensive weapon was his textbook swing. But Coach Naren's new offensive weapon was the most offensive of them all. My brother Pete was the Thai Cobb of trash talk. It was Naren's most brilliant move. As long as he kept the free Lazari flowing, Pete promised he would keep his foul mouth foaming. Hey, better, 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 better. Hey, better, so wing better, you pus drunk, burning maggot batter. <laughs> When it was our turn to bat, the pitcher became Pete's meat. We want a pitcher, not a brief skating chum jockey! Ball four. Yeah! All right, Pete, you did it. And just like that, the dreaded loser curse had been lifted. As the regular season rolled on, our team slashed and burned its way to the top of the standings. Thanks to Pete's heat-seeking, nitro-breathing, radar-guided trash talk. You scraped the legs of dung beetles to ice your cupcake. When insults failed, Pete could strike fear in the heart of a player, just hinting at an embarrassment from his past. Hey, a hot lather machine, huh? I should have been happy. Mr. Naren sure was. Rain freeze. I wished I could freeze my brain too, so I could somehow numb away the painful feeling that winning the Naren's way was destroying baseball. We won. 
You don't look too happy. I don't know what's wrong with me. If, if Naren's were here, he'd... Orange Lazarus, miss. Um, sorry, we're closed. I'm sorry, Naren's. I created the Lazarus for good, not for this. It is good, Bob. Good and frosty. So make me one now. Mr. Nairns, could I talk to you? It's about the way we've been winning games. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like baseball. Yeah, is that so? Well, thanks for the update, number five, because up till now, I thought everything you knew about baseball, you learned from me. You, you weren't even clay. You were like, like a handful of silt. But I took that silt and I molded it into my image the image of a winner. I made you what you are, and you turned on me. Forgive him, Lazarus. Mr. Nairns? Just win, baby. They were three words about to be carved into baseball's tombstone. It was one of those perfect summer days that baseball was invented for. Thanks to Mr. Narens and Pete, we were one out away from being in the championship game. All I had to do was learn to live by a simple creed, which I kept repeating like a prayer. Just win, baby. Just win, baby. I almost believed it, until the game came down to one final battle. My friend, Bill Korn. Pete, can't you do something about your little brother? Sorry, Bill. I just hope you don't have any secrets. The word was out that Pete had something on Bill that was so embarrassing, his family might have to move to another state and change their name. It's not once. It was at the candy counter at the movie theater. I thought it was imitation butter flavor topping. There, are you happy? It was all too much. Seeing Bill annihilated like that just to get into the championships. Watching Teddy turn into a Lazarus lapping jerk. Prosthetics take no prisoners. Son, slow down on that. Buzz up, Schlesingheimer. <laughs> I knew what I had to do. Pete, you gotta cut the trash talk. It's not baseball. What do you mean? I don't know how to explain it. But every game we played was like a hundred little games. Some we won and some we lost. Calling a pitch out on a 2-0 count. Breaking up a double play. Blocking the plate. If they didn't add up to a win, then we weren't good enough. But that's baseball. Don't you get it? I get this. If you try to stop me, I'll make sure everyone knows why Mom won't let you buy lard anymore. Free, free the lard! The Lazarus, Oppenheimer's once noble experiment, had claimed another victim. I become slush master, destroyer of brains. It wasn't fair. All I'd ever dreamed of was winning. Finally, I was getting what I wanted, only I didn't want it anymore. Not this way. Baseball deserved better. But what could I do to save it? Then, that's when I saw it. A sign from above. For too long, the undulating evil of the Lazarus had made baseball its slave. I could free it, but I'd need some help. Mr. Oppenheimer, no, there's got to be another way! Lazarus has stolen his last soul. 
Get out of the way, Ellen. Don't do it! Hey, Pete. What are you doing here in the championships today? Mr. Oppenheimer, listen to me. You created the Lazarus for good, didn't you? I wanted world peace. Well, I can't help you with that. But together, we can stop Narens and save baseball. How? Just bring 20 gallons of Lazarus to the championship game, and I'll show you. Please, it's our only hope. Regular or extra frosty? As cold as you can make it. That meant cranking the Lazarus into a realm of frostiness no slush had ever gone before. It's madness. So be it. It was the biggest game of my life, the league championship. The kind of game that's supposed to bring out the best in a player. In my brother Pete's case, it just brought out his worst. And that, my friend, is the way you turn a colt into a gilded. I was starting to get worried. Pete had the other team so psyched out that even seemingly ordinary words were causing damage. Madula Abongada! Where were they? What is the meaning of this? Orange Lazarus for everyone. Why wait till after the game, coach? It's a lock, right? Number five, that's bad sportsmanship. However, an empty chalice is a lonely chalice. You've learned well, number five. That's just what we need. Drink up, prosthetics! What's the problem here? Rebel! Oh, come on, drink up, everybody. Gee, it's a hot one. <laughs> it's a trick! You try it first! It's good. Cold. Come on, we got a championship to win. It began low in the brain stem, then climbed its way to the cerebral cortex, where it leapfrogged to the frontal lobe, freezer burning every neuron in its path. Two seconds, the Lazarus had worked its frosty magic with a 50 megaton brain freeze. My plan wasn't to throw the game, it was to try and even the score. With Pete's head in an icy vice, his powers were disabled. Lincoln quickly clawed itself back into the game. Finally, with two outs in the bottom of the ninth, Lincoln tied the score and the brain freeze wore off. Blood lapping! Blood strain! Blood war! If we were gonna play real baseball... Time! Huh? I had to move fast. Okay, we can beat these guys, but if we wanna be real champs, it's gotta be us, not him. 
We gotta do it with baseball and not trash talking. What do you say? Yeah! We don't need you. I always knew you were a loser, number five, but this is treason. Take him out. Go ahead. Do it. It's funny how a little spoonful of lard can be so explosive. Just remember, if you destroy me, you destroy baseball, the game I love. Don't tell me you're a loser, too. Am I the only one who cares about winning? What are you talking about? Maybe we should ask the squeezy salesman. That won't be necessary. My frosty friend, our chariot awaits. Lazarus will rise again, slush master. It is over, Narens, and you know it. Don't listen to him. Bravo! With Narens banished from the kingdom of baseball, we were free to play the game the way it was meant to be played. Where the fate of two teams hangs not on the things that you say, but on the things that you do. We lost the championship that day, but for some reason, I didn't feel like a failure. There you are, nice and safe. <laughs> Losers. As for Mr. Nairns, no one ever saw him again. I heard he just kept driving until the Lazarus ran out. As for me and Pete, we were on the same side again. I guess you could say that together, we saved the game of baseball that day. Maybe next year I wouldn't make it onto a winning team. Then again, maybe that's not what it takes to be a winner. <laughs>